Hello everyone! Today's video is a must watch for bloggers. I will introduce you to apps where you can add annotation to images. I've been writing about iPad on this platform for blogging called Note lately. As I've been blogging, there are some apps I found it really helpful when blogging, so that's what I want to introduce you all today. What I'm showing you right now, Note, has been popular recently. It's pretty much a platform for blogging, and anyone can write a blog without any knowledge about blogging or website. You can even write an article and sell it here too, so that could be one of the reasons why it's popular. I mainly focus on my YouTube channel, but I decided to use Note because I thought it could be a good idea to write an article with a list of videos from the past. I'll put the link to my note down below, so please check it out from there. All my articles are free, and I talk about all sorts of useful stuff, so please take a look if you have time. For today, since what I usually do is insert images from here and there when blogging, and by adding these red lines or this arrow to these images, it makes things a lot easier for readers to understand. So in this video, I'll introduce you to two apps that can be useful to do these things. The first app is called Annotable. This is free to download. And even though it's free, there is so much you can do in this app. This will be for intermediate users. With this app, you could add annotation to image as much as you want. So I highly suggest this app Annotable for those who want to add details to an image like this. The other app is called Sketch. It's an app released by Evernote. It's pretty simple, intuitive, and it's much easier to use. There's no in-app purchase for this app. So today I want to introduce you to how to use these two apps and how I write a blog on Note. It would be great if you could watch this video until the end. Alright, let's start with the app Annotable. Once you open this app, you can see a list of photos from your camera roll. So I can select the photo from here, but since I kind of want to add comments to the screenshot image, I'm going to open a different app. There is a video editing app called LumaFusion, which got a lot of features and tools that can come in handy when you want to write and explain something over an image. So take a screenshot of this image, swipe up from the bottom left like this to do so, and save it in your camera roll. Now go back to Annotable, and a new image should be added, so click on this and open. In Annotable, we basically use the toolbars located at the bottom right and the bottom left to edit. As you tap the button at the bottom right, it will give you many tools and this is where we can select a tool. For instance, if I select this rectangle tool, the rectangle one of the frame tool, we have the color as well as the line thickness on the left side, so grab red color here, and just like this, drag the part of the screen you want to enclose. And now we have a beautiful frame line. If you want to make the line thicker, you can do so from here. I just erased and drew the new frame line, but you can always change the line thickness later too. Next, in case you want to add some words over this, from the tool panel at the bottom right, select where it says A, and you can add some color as well as text decorations on the left side. You do have to pay for the text decorations except for a few ones that are available for free. So pick one of your choice, and set the text size relatively smaller, and start typing in text here. For instance, since this frame at the bottom is to show timeline, so I could say something like, this is the timeline. So as long as you select these text and go to the options at the bottom left, you can always adjust the font size, add decorations, and change the color. It gets easier to see the text with the frame, so please do so from here if you want. 
The other thing that comes in handy is the arrow tool. Select this arrow mark right here, long tap and drag it, and now you can create an arrow easily. This can be really helpful as for instance if you want to tell others where they can find a specific tool. You could just say something like it's right here with the arrow mark. I also recommend this feature called highlights. For highlights, there are two types, one that's handwritten and the other one that's automatic. For the highlights added automatically, it automatically recognizes the text in the image and highlights underneath the text only like this. This is pretty great, right? I assume it's got an OCR function, but like this, just by drawing a line, it gets colored quickly. It's got some weird colors on the right, but it probably didn't get it right, and this happens once in a while. But it should work out most of the times. Especially when you import a document file in PDF format, it nicely adds highlights. You could add highlights by handwriting too in case it doesn't work well, so please use it away according to your preferences. In case you want to delete these highlights, touch the highlighted parts with the upper pencil, and there should be a delete button at the bottom, so tap it and you can delete them in the same way as you delete the path. There are many other interesting features, for instance this thing called Mosaic Tool is pretty interesting. For Mosaic Tool, there are Shapes 1 and the Handwriting 1. Let's say I grab some shapes and drag an area where I want to apply the Mosaic to, for instance, and now it's applied to the part I selected, though I'm not sure if you can tell. It was just a tiny bit, but if you go to the left, you can set the size of the Mosaic, so as you set it bigger and apply the Mosaic like this, you can easily apply mosaic to the part you don't want it to be shown. With the handwriting one, you can apply it partially or only to the part you want to apply. This can be used when you want to hide an email address as you edit an email for instance. There's also a zoom tool which looks like a magnifying glass. It's this tool that looks like a search button. As you select this, since tools are display kind of small right now, especially on the left, and there are times we want to magnify them. In this case, you can drag like this. This eye mark gets bigger as you can tell. It was a lot smaller, but now it's magnified. We're going to move this, so long tap and drag the middle point here. We want to magnify this one, and we want to make this eye mark bigger. Long tap the eye mark right here, and then the screen with a magnified one shows up right beside it. And this can come in handy especially when you want to explain tools and details. So please remember and use this. The last thing I recommend is a spotlight tool. The spotlight tool is this black bar right here. So select this black part and grab rectangle for instance. This is a tool that helps make a section of an image brighter. So if I want to make the panel at the upper left look brighter, just drag it. This way only the upper left panel gets brighter and the rest looks like they're covered with a sort of black filters. So this helps draw more attention to the upper left panel. You could do this with any section, so if you want people to draw attention to this part right here, just enclose it like this. It might be a good idea to add text here too. You can change the text color, but apparently you'd have to pay to do that. You can use up to around 5 colors for free, but other than that, and if you want to use more colors, you will need to pay. I managed to add a spotlight to the upper left, and now I want to make the timeline at the bottom brighter too. In the same way, select the spotlight tool again and drag here, and this part gets brighter as well. Just like this, by making use of the eye mark and adding annotation to necessary parts, it makes it a lot easier for viewers to see and understand what's going on. So it might be a good idea to use this for those who write a blog especially. Once this is complete, I will export. I will export from the upper right, 
But as I tap on this, it says that I need to pay. This is because there is a tool I use that requires payment. It was this magnifying tool at the Apple Lab I mentioned earlier. I do have to pay for this one, and in this app, Annotable, you need to make a payment per tool, and it adds up as you buy more tools. If you want to use all the tools, then you could pay around $10 to use them all you want. But in case you only want to use a specific tool, it's around $2 per tool. Or you can buy multiple tools at a time. Once you made your purchase, save your image from the export tab. And now it should be saved in your camera roll like this. Regarding annotation, I would say don't put it too much. For color 2, stick with maybe two colors only, keeping it simple and easy to understand. This is not illustration nor design, so a tip here would be to try to make it as simple as possible. Next, I will talk about the other app called Sketch. The app Sketch got much fewer tools and it's super simple. So for those who just want to do annotation quickly, I recommend using Sketch as it's easy to understand. As usual, once you open the app, you should open your camera roll, so select a screenshot image and display on the screen like this. This time, I have a screenshot image from Affinity Designer. When making annotation in Sketch, we'll start from certain details from the burn rate as well. There are only six categories. So for instance, using a frame tool, and close the section on the left. And do the same on the right, switch to a text tool to specify what they are. Here we have an arrow tool, and as you drag it, the arrow tool shows up like this. But what's different from the app Annotable is the shape of this arrow. This arrow looks like a bit strange showing up like this. I personally don't really like this style, and I even think it could just be a straight line instead. But if anyone prefers to use this dynamic arrow, please use this one. The mosaic tool here is used just to blur out a part of the image. So once I select the mosaic tool and drag, only the area selected is blurred out. If you want to have a bigger size, there is a tool panel at the bottom left where you can adjust the size. Now there are a couple tools that can be found in Sketch, but not in the first up annotable mentioned earlier, so I will talk about them here. The first one is the freehand tool. While you can type in text by handwriting in annotable, there is this freehand tool in Sketch. So I could write something like recommend it in red right here for instance, but here's the thing, it seems like it takes some time to detect your writing. A letter gradually appears a second after you finish writing, and I assume many of you have used note-taking apps such as GoodNotes and Notability, and unlike these apps, it doesn't detect your writing well, so this is something to keep in mind I think. You really have to write slowly in this one, so it will work if you just want to add a bit of handwritten text. But I wouldn't recommend this app for those who want to include lots of annotation by handwriting. There is this thing called a stamp tool. I'm not sure when this tool is used honestly, but to explain what it is, it lets you add some face emojis. Here, this might be too small for you to see, and I think you should be able to change the size of this stamp, but I forgot where you can do that. But it's basically a small stamp of face emoji I have here, and you can find a smiley face, an angry face, a heart, and other than face emojis, you can also find a checkbox button and many other things as well. So I guess use these stamps when you want to draw attention to a certain part. This is complete, so go to the upper right to export as we did earlier. There's no in-app purchase in this app sketch, and it's completely a free app. So for those who find it a hassle to pay for anything, then this app might be a good one to use. But when it comes to the features as well as the ease of use, I definitely prefer Notable without a doubt. And for Notable, make in-app purchases too if you can. Okay, just like this, I managed to add annotation to my screenshot image. And when inserting this image into the block code node, I place it on top of these iPad templates I have. 
So once I fit it into the frame of this template, export it in JP format and pass it on node. Regarding these templates, I make them in an app called Keynote by Apple we have by default. And using this app, you can basically move the image within the image like this. Let me switch this image with something else. While keeping the image selected from the brush category at the top, select this one that says show placeholder here at the bottom, where it will then show a plus button right here. Once you select this plus button, you can see your camera roll like this. So select the image you created earlier in Notable here, and now the image should be displayed while fitting into the screen. So all you have to do is to have these templates ready in advance, take a screenshot, and switch these images as you add annotation to each image. So just like this, you can quickly create a simple yet stylish document. If you're interested, please refer to my note to see what it's like and how it's done. In my online community called iPadMade, I run an online seminar every week where you get to learn a bunch of things about iPad. So for those who want to master the use of iPad, please join us. I have my own blog using the apps I introduced today on a table and sketch. And here you can find lots of useful information too. So please feel free to check it out as well. I'll put the link in the description box down below. And for my note, all the articles are free to read and I write about all the useful stuff here and I write these articles with some of my members from my iPad Mate community as we hope to have more iPad lovers by sharing these things with you guys so please check them out in your free time if you're curious about what's going on behind the scene or how we write these articles together please check out my online community and please join us if you're interested in writing blog on Node as well Alright, that's all for today. If you like this video, please give a thumbs up and thank you for watching my video. Bye bye!